Jeepers Creepers, a 2001 horror film written and directed by Victor Salva. It stars Gina Phillips and Justin Long as Trish and Derry, two siblings who are pursued by the Creeper, a demonic creature and mysterious serial killer portrayed by Jonathan Breck. Jeepers Creepers is a very creepy film which really does shock you throughout and even though there are some incredibly graphic scenes in this movie, there are also moments where the fear factor is done in a subtle way where it's left to our own imagination. When I first watched Jeepers Creepers as a young teenager, I went to bed that night with the lights on because it freaked me out that much. So get yourselves comfy and let's take a look at 10 moments from the 2001 film Jeepers Creepers. Number 10, The Truck From Hell. The movie begins and we are introduced to character siblings Trish and Derry, who are driving home on a long scenic route where they reminisce and talk about relationships and family. You genuinely enjoy listening to the siblings' stories and their banter, and I think the casting for these two were brilliant. After they pass an elderly couple on the road, it's not long before we can see a really big truck coming up behind them in the distance getting closer and closer and at one point it looks like that the truck is literally gonna slam into the back of them. This truck by the way is one of the most terrifying looking trucks I've ever seen. It literally just screams out serial killer. The truck lets off a really loud horn over and over again while it's behind Derry. He then starts trying to wave his hands and telling the truck to go around him. But the truck just keeps honking the horn over and over again and it's really unnerving because you literally don't know what is happening or where this is going. The truck eventually goes around the car and drives off, leaving Derry and Trish completely confused and freaked out at what just happened. Number 9. What was he throwing down that pipe? Not long after the terrifying truck incident, Derry and Trish spot the truck a few miles down the road, parked up at the side near an old church. And as they pass him, they spot him throwing something down a pipe something wrapped in a sheet with red stains on it. But as they spot this guy doing this, the guy spots them and stares at both of them as they continue to drive past. It's that awful situation where you've just witnessed something that you probably wish you hadn't and the person behind the situation has just spotted you. And of course this guy jumps back into the truck and chases Derry and Trish down the road. Derry puts his foot down, but this truck is just way too fast. It smashes into the back of them over and over again, and it's just a horrible moment of chaos. The truck smashes into them over before Derry drives off the road and through a fence, where the truck driver drives off. It's at that moment when you realise, oh shit, we are in the middle of nowhere, and there is clearly a madman on the loose, and you honestly end up putting yourself in that situation. One what on earth would you do? Number 8 Discovering the Bodies A gruesome moment now in our next spot and Derry manages to persuade his sister Trisha to go back to the pipe and to take a look at what is down there. So they head back and when they get to this pipe, they can't really see anything until a small noise comes up from the bottom. Derry gets his torch and climbs into the pipe at the top to try and get a better look, claiming that he can see something down there moving. All of a sudden, an army of rats come running up the pipe and Derry ends up falling in all the way to the bottom. He manages to get away with a cut hand and some bruises and he tells his sister to go to the road and wait for him to come through the church's basement. He then sees the bloodied sheet on the ground and when he gives it a little nudge, a hand grabs him where he ends up freaking out. He opens up the sheet where he sees a young boy trying to catch his breath but he's unable to say anything. Derry then opens the sheet some more and we then see that this boy is pretty much being mutilated. 
the boy then ends up dying in front of Derry and Derry has no option but to walk further into the basement and to look for a way out where he discovers hundreds of bodies preserved and stuck to the walls and the ceilings literally every inch of that basement is covered with a dead body it's quite a horrific scene that literally has you on the edge of your seat Number 7, Creepy Phone Call From A Stranger After Derry manages to get out of the basement of horror, he and Trish drive to a diner where she asks the lady in charge that they need help and they need to call the police. Derry is in a total state of shock and sister Trish tries to get him to snap out of it. All of a sudden, the payphone that they are standing next to starts to ring and when Trish answers, a strange woman is on the other side of the phone, asking Trish if they've seen the cat yet and goes on to say Derry's name like she knows him. Derry then grabs the phone and asks who is this and the woman then tells Derry that she knows who he is and even describes the tattoos that he has on his body and what he's wearing. She goes on to give a terrifying message that this demon or devil creature isn't going to stop coming after them and she then places the phone next to the radio that's playing the Jeepers Creepers song and the woman tells Derry that when they hear that song they need to run. It's a very eerie message that just adds to the confusion of the intense storyline. Derry then tells the woman to do one and hangs up and he tells his sister Trish that they need to go as soon as the cops get there. Number 6 Someone at your car when the cops arrive to listen to Derry's story about the bodies in the basement, they can't quite believe what they are hearing. I love the part when Derry tells them that this guy has hundreds of bodies down there stitched together like some sort of quilt. They are then interrupted when the owner of the diner says something is going on outside by your car. Everyone then runs out and all of Derry's clothes have been pulled out from the back of his car and left all over the floor. The owner of the diner then says that there was a man at the car sniffing the laundry. Derry then tells Trish and the cops now do they believe him. This guy is clearly after them. What I love about this scene is the fact that we don't see anything, we just listen to what that lady has to say and the rest is left to our imagination. And of course, we still literally don't know what is going on at this point in the movie. Number 5, First Encounter with the Creeper Derry and Trish are driving down the road late at night with the cops driving behind them and the siblings are taking the cops to the church and that pipe. As they are driving, the cops get a radio alert telling them that the church is on fire. Next minute, something is on top of the police car and when the female officer sticks her head out, she gets pulled out. The creeper then rips open the roof of the car and chops off the policeman's head and throws the head down at Derry and Trish's car and it bounces off their bonnet, scaring the crap out of them. So they end up slamming onto their brakes with the police car stopping just behind them and when they get out to investigate what just happened, Trish sees the decapitated head of the policeman on the floor. Then out comes the creeper, who ends up picking up the decapitated head and he then starts to sniff it. Derry and Trish are back in the car watching in disbelief and then the creeper starts to eat something out of the head. It almost looks like the creeper is giving this head a kiss at one point, but we then see that the creeper is actually eating the tongue and it's absolutely gross and disturbing on so many levels. And Derry and Trish then drive off in a huge panic and tell Tell you what guys, I don't blame them. Number 4 The Old Lady and the Cats Derry and Trish arrive outside someone's house and they are hoping that this person has got a phone so they can call the police. When they walk up to the house, they spot a creepy scarecrow in the garden. This old woman is then sitting at the porch with the lights off, asking Trish and Derry what do they want. And Trish explains that they need a telephone to call the cops. But this old lady has no love for the cops, as the cops keep telling her how many cats that she's allowed to have. It's at this point Derry realises that the crazy woman on the phone earlier on mentioned something about the cats. 
all of a sudden the electrics go off and the scarecrow in the garden is no longer a scarecrow, it's the creeper and it's bloody terrifying. The old lady then comes out with a gun, threatening to blast this thing away if it doesn't get off her property. As the old lady goes to fire, the creeper then literally jumps in the air and into the old lady's house, like, like literally with the blink of an eye. And then we hear the cats going crazy. The old lady runs into the house while Derry and Trish wait outside, and we then hear some gunshots fired, followed by an eerie silence. Next minute, the creeper comes to the doorway, holding the old woman up in the air who's been impaled by the gun. It's at this moment we get a good look at the creeper, who literally looks like the creature from hell. Number 3, the creeper attacks the prisoners. So Derry and Trish eventually make it back to a police station by the skin of their teeth, but it's not long before all hell breaks loose and the power is cut. So with the police station in a total blackout, the cops do a search of the station, and one of them goes down to check on the prisoners just to make sure that none of them have escaped. When the officer goes down, he comes across a gruesome sight. He sees two prisoners standing up against the wall looking absolutely terrified and then the officer shines his torch over and he sees the creeper bent down and huddled in a corner eating one of the prisoners. It's really gross and the creeper is like shaking as he's mauling at this person's body and the sounds that the creeper makes while it's swallowing is just so disgusting. The officer then pulls out his gun but it's too late, the creeper turns around and grabs him. Number 2, the creeper takes Derry. The creeper is causing chaos at the police station and the officers are all armed and they're trying to shoot him. Derry and Trish have made a run for it to another part of the police station and they're trying to hide. And they end up in an interview room with a one-sided mirror, but what they don't realise is that the creeper is on the other side of this mirror and can smell them. The creeper then smashes through and grabs both of them, pinning them up against the wall and sniffing their faces and their bodies and it's like, ugh, gross. The creeper then decides that it wants Derry and throws Trish to the floor. The cops then burst in and shine the torch directly at Derry and the creeper. It's at this point the creeper does something quite disturbing with its face. These weird skin prong things come bursting out of its face and the creeper lets off a terrifying screeching noise. Next minute the creeper pops out its wings and just before the cops get a chance to shoot it, it bursts out of the police station window while holding in Derry, and it flies off into the night. Trisha runs out and tries to follow it on foot, but it's no use. The creeper has taken her brother. Before we get to number one, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We currently upload new videos every week, and we are really looking to grow this channel, so make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Number 1, The Ending. The following morning arrives and we are left with a distraught Trisha still at the police station and wondering if she's ever going to see her brother again. We then cut to a run down derelict building where we can hear the Jeepers Creeper song playing in the background. As the camera pans around, we see the creeper sitting in the distance. Next minute, the camera pans up from Derry's stomach, very slowly, and then the camera shows what Derry has been through because we see that his clothes have been ripped off and he's got claw marks on his shoulder, but the scariest part is when we see Derry's face. He has no eyes in his head. The creeper has literally removed his eye sockets and literally eaten them. And the way Derry's face has been left, you can clearly tell that Derry was screaming when he died. It's quite a shocking and disturbing ending. And once again, a lot of this is left to our own imaginations. We don't actually see Derry's death on screen. We just see the after effects, which sometimes is much more scarier. And that was 10 moments from Jeepers Creepers. So guys, do you like Jeepers Creepers? Did it scare you when you first watched it? Like I said earlier on, I was only a young teenager when I first watched this movie and it scared the crap out of me. I thought it was very different to other horror films and it had me terrified all the way through. But let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. 
Okay guys, well, thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, stay safe, and I'll see you all again very soon.